Hello. Uh, like the slide says, I'm Nick. And um, like the slide also says, I'm here to inspire you. Um, I think over the course of this talk, I'm either going to aspire, uh, inspire a dangerous mob to run me out of here, or maybe, and more hopefully, inspire um, some thoughtful reflection on some ideas that we hold really, really sacredly in this country, but I think might be a bit dangerous. Um, so I, instead of wasting time trying to set this up, I'm a direct person, so I'm just going to get into it. I want to ask if America is the greatest country on the planet. Um, I have some, and in and, and asking this question, I don't want to think about it so abstractly. I want to think about the things that we actually do as a country and whether, um, I mean, even statistically speaking, whether we rank highly. Um, we learn these ideas from a, long, from a really young age. Um, I remember I grew up in Klamath Falls, Oregon. It may be a, a unique experience there, but as a part of the curriculum, we learned that we are all very, very lucky to be Americans, that it's by any standard the greatest place to be, the most creative. Everything happens here. And it's a very deeply uh, ingrained idea. It's one that's very hard to challenge. And it does have some consequences as well. Um, since being a young child in rural Oregon, I've had a lot of chances to travel, um, both when I was at Concordia uh, and when I left Concordia and was in grad school. I had a chance to study abroad as well. And um, in the process, made friends with a lot of uh, people in the international community who see this as a very strange idea to just assert your dominance over the rest of the world all the time. Um, so I, I wasn't going to talk about this originally. I was going to talk about environmental activism. Um, but I read an article just a few weeks ago that had some statistics that I wanted to share in public. And this was a great opportunity to do so. So um, there, there's some neat comparisons with um, industrial first world countries about how the United States um, compares. And we can ask at a very empirical level, is the United States number one? So the first thing that we are definitely number one in is that we pay our CEOs far more than we do average workers. And um, this isn't something that's always been, this is a development over the last 40 years or so, um, but it's not even close. We pay way more. Um, you might say, oh, well, we're a wealthy country, so we can afford to do that. Um, the percentage of the total income received by the top 0.1% is much higher in this country. And a, a statistic that I don't have a graph for, um, but that's been thrown around recently is the top 400 earning or uh, wealth holding Americans have as much wealth as the bottom 50% of the country combined. Um, that's, to me, it's a troubling statistic. Um, we spend far more on military than any other country in the world. Um, the next seven countries that spend don't even come close to us, and we spend more and more each year. Um, we incarcerate people at a rate much higher than anyone else in the, in the world. Um, my ear thing's falling out. We kill each other at a rate that far exceeds anything that any other country can come close to. Um, keep in mind that these are, we're comparing first world in, uh, industrial countries, which I think is the relevant comparison. Um, we pay more for healthcare than other people do in similar situations. We, uh, and we don't cover everybody. We have um, higher infant mortality. Very surprising, most people wouldn't think about that, but we actually, um, our children die in, in birth a lot more than any other country that's similarly situated. Um, we spend far less on families as a percentage of our gross domestic product. Um, looking back at military spending, you can see the priorities there. Um, we have 20% uh, of the children in this country live in poverty. Like, who thinks about that when you think about America? Does anybody wake up in the morning and say, hey, man, we have 20% of our country, or our children in poverty? Very surprising. Um, and we also have a much higher homeless population than um, comparable countries. So um, the point of putting these out in public and talking about them is that, um, First of all, I want to make it clear that nobody here thinks about this, but our statistic reputation in the world, when we compare it to countries, we are the greediest, most violent, and least caring people, statistically, at this point in history. This should trouble us a lot. Um, and wh how this ties back into the idea of American exceptionalism is that I think that this is a Captain America shield, so it acts as a shield against um, 
thinking about this in a lot of ways. First of all, we just don't want to hear it. Um, it's something that is very uncomfortable to think about. Um, we don't think of our system in that way, and so to see it plainly spelled out is, is pretty, it's hard emotionally to deal with because we have these emotional connections. Um, it's also, um, it, it causes us to reject reforms in a lot of ways. We don't think about changing things because we really cherish the system that we have. So even if the system is shown to be failing us, we don't want to change it just because that would be anti-American. And everybody says that when we approach these problems. Um, we develop a really insular view of the rest of the world. We tend to look at it as us versus them. It's also very problematic, and you can see that in foreign policy a lot of times. Um, and I think the last thing it does is it prevents us from taking ideas from people that have actually solved a lot of the problems or have dealt with and have better solutions to a lot of the modern problems that we deal with. And specifically, um, and because I live there and I have an affinity for it, I want to talk about European socialism, um, also known as a social democracy. Um, the um, Europeans have the same problems that we do in a lot of ways, but they're able to provide health care for their citizens um, almost universally. Different nations have different systems, but they're able to do it. Um, they have job protections. They have paid sick leave. They have vacation time, right? I know a bunch of people that I went to school with that are just going to jobs right now. They have minimum six weeks off. We get two, right? And it's, it's rare that we get more than that. Um, they have maternity and paternity leave. Outside of the job, the, they have consumer protections. Um, I was talking with an employee of Citibank a few weeks ago, and she told me that 70% of the profits that Citibank makes come from overdraft charges and um, other hidden fees that they have as a bank. Uh, highly, highly profitable company, makes most of its profits off of that. Unheard of, can't happen in Europe, it's banned, you can't make profits off of these things. Um, and it's just one example of many of enhanced consumer protection. Um, and just another point is that the cities in Europe are clean, modern, they have transportation systems that work. We shouldn't shy away from it. It's not just that Europe has all the answers or something like that. I like it and it, I live there so I, I use it as an example. But the ability to see that other people have solved problems is something that I think may have historically been an American way of looking at things. We're a country of immigrants. but. Over the last, in my lifetime at least, it's never been considered as something that we should do. Um, so finally, um, if we are able to um, overcome American exceptionalism, which has many forms, I mean, some are, we don't, some are just low attachments and they don't have an uh, impact on everyday life. Probably more like a Northwest crowd would, we still have attachment, but it doesn't get in the way of us wanting to make reforms. But there are some really, far more dangerous forms, and I think if we address the problem at once, we can get over that. So I'd like to replace um, that mindset with something a lot more internationally um, based. I'm having trouble with this, sorry about that. And um, these are not radical ideas, and probably a lot of ways they might be like, oh, these are actually American ideas in some ways, but um, we need to become internationally minded. Um, that means travel a lot meet people from around the world, um, become comfortable with the world as it is, uh, and help us find our place there, instead of trying to assert ourselves over the world. Um, we need to embrace multiculturalism. Like I said, we're a country of immigrants, and for whatever reason, we have a horrible, horrible problem um, in how we deal with immigration issues and the other, which are anybody that aren't American at this point, um, and multiculturalism within our own country. Um, we need to adopt sustainable habits and policies, and I don't need to talk about that, because this forum, um, especially in Portland here, lots of the speakers are talking about that today. And um, we need to commit to a quality life for all people that doesn't just have to do with money. We shouldn't see, I, Europeans, um, all my friends couldn't understand why we don't consider healthcare to be a right for anybody, um, even just, did, did, no matter what your um, income level is. I think that we should start thinking more that way and continue to expand our spheres of justice. Um, I think recently we've taken a hit with that, with three wars going on right now, and um, up until recently a, a torture program that we justify to ourselves on a daily basis in the country and make excuses for why it's okay. We can't accept that if we're gonna move forward and be a, a major player in the international community. Um, 
I'm running out of time, but um, the last thing I wanted to, this slide here is um, post or pre-Soviet collapse, um, Europe, the areas in red are the Eastern Bloc countries. The point is that systems change, they change quickly, and they change unexpectedly. And um, if I could have one wish, it, it would be that we as a country would start looking um, forward to change, but starting to make that groundwork possible so that when things unexpectedly do change, that we move towards something that's more um, caring and takes care of our citizens rather than something that's more reactionary. Um, thanks for your time, and hope you guys over there.